Thank you. Um, yeah, so I will talk about a different uh, uh, plasma model, which is a uh, well, slightly different application. So it services the MHD, but we are interested in uh, tokamak simulation. So this is a joint work with a few people here, Louis Shekong, Xianzhu Tang, and Zhanyu, uh, and also Zhang Shedi. And uh, this work uh, got a lot of help from uh, infant team. So I would like to uh, give a shout out to some of those people. Um, so I'll, I'll dive into so uh, into the model. So we are interested in this uh, uh, incompressible resist MHD. Uh, in case you don't know, it's uh, you can interpret it's, uh, it's uh, incompressible incompressible Navi Stokes plus a magnetic field. And we are interested to develop an efficient and uh, scalable solver for uh, tokamak uh, simulations. So that's the the uh, main uh, interesting uh, interested applications uh, in our side lab. So there are, there are various uh, numerical challenges associated with that model, uh, associated with the problems we are interested. So we are actually interested in very specific uh, application of MHD. And we are interested um, generate a long time uh, instability of the inside the model. So, so in other words, we don't, we don't really um, care about those uh, short uh, hyperbolic wave uh, in some sense. So in other words, this, the, the, the solution we have is fully implicit. So um, everything uh, is implicit and everything uh, like a hyperbolic waves is stiff in this system. And the ways we are also interested in the secondary instability, which is called plasma instability, and it's a multi-scale um, uh, feature. So it's, we rely on dynamic AMI and adaptive time snapping. And of course, we are interested in tokamak, so we use finite element, and uh, then there's a high Lorentz number issue, which is uh, which requires the stabilization. And in this case, we use SUPG in FM. And the most important, uh, we would like to get a scalable solver. Um, in this context, we uh, the, our solution is NFERM plus uh, physics-based pre-commissioning plus uh, hyper uh, multigrade. So some of those um, um, capability have been demonstrated in our legacy code, but um, for, for the new area of uh, new time of this uh, ECP, so we would like to leverage um, some of the existing packages. So instead of developing everything from scratch, so that's why we choose Enfirm uh, to be uh, due to its scalability and uh, adaptivity and uh, flexibility. So that's why uh, we use Enfirm. So uh, I will talk about the model. So in this case, we use this uh, three function vorticity model uh, in 2D. So it's, a, it's a, like a computer, the potential of the V and the B. But uh, this, this model contains all the uh, numerical challenges I described uh, previously for the four image model. So, and there's a good reason we, we actually do that uh, for even for the four model, uh, that uh, the reason uh, is uh, there's a reduced version of the four model in the, in the context of Tokma, which is very similar to this one. Um, so this is the, um, so for the, to discretize, we use a uh, stream for, uh, SUPG formation and it's, it's quite standard in some sense. And we use H1 uh, on element for all the components uh, for phi, psi and omega, which is a stream function vorticity and uh, uh, magnetic potential. So I won't get into details of our stabilization, uh, our formation. I'll talk about the high level algorithm instead. So we are, we uh, eventually this this system we're doing fully implicit as I said, and everything can be written as a GU equal to zero or equal to right hand side. And uh, this is a uh, we this is a nonlinear problem, and we use uh, Jacobi free Newton Quilo, uh in the high level algorithm. So you do have Newton, you uh, compute the uh, you you need to evaluate this action, and instead of form the matrix, we use uh, Jacobi free um, implementation, and then there's a Quilo method. And the preconditioning. So the those are all standard, but the most important thing we try to figure out is trying to develop a efficient a efficient preconditioning in uh, in the context of stabilized finite element. And uh, we found the key is to do this block factorization and uh, algebra multigrade. So the, the focus of this talk will focus on how how we actually come come up with the this preconditioning and how we develop the preconditioning in Enfim framework. So, um, so to linearize uh, the system, so you, you roughly look at uh, this approximate linearization system looks like this. So it's a, there's three, uh, three fields 
and uh, the, the, this uh, system is off diagonal, uh, can be off diagonal dominant uh, in the large time step limit. So therefore, uh, we actually need to do something uh, to do something to uh, to invert this matrix. So the the, the precondition for this idea is a start from, the starting point is very simple. So we are we are actually interested start from this uh, uh, sound wave system uh, du dt equal to vx dv dt equals ux and then you discretize and this off diagonal uh, the off diagonal term that you apply the should complement together the uh, diagonal term which is a, a parabolic term or elliptic term so which you can invert to use uh, any multi grid solver right. so but in this context we need actually need to do something uh, to expose such a system so we actually uh, have to modify the system slightly um, and then we end up a very similar system uh, this uh, similar to this uh, sound wave system but you can see the right hand side actually has to be modified. So um, uh, on top of that, um, we actually use the diagonal portion of this uh, this operator, and then we form the shear complement to uh, to to use use it as the preconditional part. So so in the end, this uh, precondition looks like this. So I, I won't get into too much details, but uh, uh, the the point I want to make here is this one is um, is quite a uh, it's not trivial to implement, and it's also not compatible with, with uh, many uh, nice framework like field split. Um, uh, instead, of this is uh, realized in Anthem through the following. So we define the nonlinear residue function in Anthem, uh, just uh, define GU equal to zero. And then we assemble some uh, sub-block matrices in Anthem and pass those to Patsy through get gradient. And then we use Patsy's uh, SNES solvers, uh, JFNK in exact Newton, um, matrix we find a difference and so on. And then we collect all those uh, small operators to form the action of this, this preconditioner using a uh, shear, shear preconditioner. So which is in, in info, it's called Petty Preconditioner Factory. So this is uh, how we implement this preconditioner. Uh, another possibility is Kingso, but we haven't explored that yet. So everything here I described here is uh, all on CPU. All right, so let's uh, give, uh, let me give an overview of the solver. So basically we have an infirm uh, solver and the, uh, the, 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 the right uh, the right text uh, is, is actually what we implemented or actually the focus of our, uh, our uh, work. Uh, it, so first we put in the, the model and the final element discretization. And then we uh, customize some interface with uh, dynamic AMR. And also we uh, focus on the Nonlinear solver at the preconditioning part. So in summary, uh, the, the main library we use is Anthem, Patsy, and Hyper. And uh, I would I won't touch the uh, AMR part, but we we a lot of effort is trying to get the AMR working for the the multi-scale problems we are interested. In. So I'll show you some actually uh, show some result on that. So um, I'll show you some two quick result. Uh, the first one is this called a uh, Turing mode result. So basically you have this um, different direction of this initial magnet field uh, looks like this, and this is not stable. So they will form this island. So this is actually, uh, this is exactly resistive uh, instability. So it actually takes time to, very long time to develop. So we, we, we have the solver to uh, simulate the same problem. So it formed uh, this uh, uh, cat eye, that's what it's called. And you can see that this is uh, this is uh, actually the dynamics we care about, right? So it's a, it's a from it's a very long time zero to two fifty, and it developed very slowly. And to point it out, uh, the the wave uh, in this system is uh, scale like in the order of one. So if we if we use we actually respect the self constraint of the uh, the wave, uh, we are looking at a uh, hundred thousand of time step to resolve this uh, this curve. So, but in reality, we are using, uh, instead of using that many time steps, in this simulation, we use uh, 50 time steps because of we use an uh, implicit so. And if we increase the resistivity, oh, sorry, decrease the resistivity, this, this uh, dynamics is even slower. So this is actually uh, the reason why uh, we care about uh, fully implicit time step. Um, yeah, on top of that, we are interested to get uh, interested to demonstrate uh, the, a scalable solver. Uh, so in this case, we have uh, a demonstration of the exact same setup. 
with a fixed time step of one. And uh, we, we increased the uh, gray resolution uh, by 4,000 times, I think, and we fix number of degrees freedom on each CPUs. So everything here is a CPU. So, you, so basically the problem increase, I mean, the degree freedom in the, in the spatial domain increased by 4,000, but, but the, the, the computation time uh, increased by a factor of uh, less than seven. So, um, so I don't want to get into details of how the, uh, those details, but um, the point I want to make is we, we actually demonstrate a great algorithmic and parallel uh, scaling using Enfim and the pre-conditioning we developed. And the, the, the final example I want to demonstrate is this called island coalescence uh, uh, simulation. So uh, basically it's that you have, you start from two, two islands of uh, current or magnetic field. And because current runs uh, same direction and they will, attract, they will got attracted to each other. And then they form this current sheet in, in the middle. So this is, a, this is what happened in, uh, in the later time as a current sheet. So this is the primary instability of this island collisions. And then there's a secondary instability which is called plasmoid. I, I introduced it in, in the beginning of my talk. So basically this current sheet, when, when the Lundquist number increased, the current sheet will break. So it will actually form a small island, a smaller, even smaller island than they colliding into each other. So it's a very multi-scale feature uh, of this uh, test. So as a result, it's a very challenging problem for any code uh, there. So now, now I'll just present some results using AMR. Uh, this one, uh, I'll give some parameter here. So they, there's two islands colliding into each other. And the, the, the contour line is uh, scale from, zero to 500. So that's why you, you did not see uh, much things going on, but actually this it's already started forming some structures. So you can see the, the AMR try to follow this structure. And in the end, there's this very thin current sheet forming and uh, the mesh from try to capture those uh, current sheet. So this is a, a very nice uh, application of M firm you know, in, term, in terms of the AMR adaptive mesh refinement because it's really a very localized feature of the, the problem. And uh, if we increase uh, the Lundgren's number and to 10 to the six, uh, you can see that the, the current sheet uh, starts to break. And uh, uh, this is uh, uh, even more interesting because we, we want our uh, AMI to capture those plasmoids. And we don't know, um, in, in practice, we don't know where it is. Uh, so that's why we want to use a dynamic AMR to capture those features automatically. So there's a 10 to the seven simulation. Uh, I won't uh, run through it, uh, but, but this case is even more challenging. We're looking at a very tiny region of the entire domain and uh, the current sheet break uh, very frequently and they form very complicated uh, plasmoid structures and they colliding into each other. And so, you can see in the end, it's quite uh, complicated. And uh, we use uh, seven levels of uh, refinement and they try to capture those uh, structures uh, dynamically. So I will show you the, the final, uh, like a final later uh, mesh. So you can see there's a seven level of uh, adapt mesh uh, refinement and they try to capture the structure uh, really, really well. So that's, that's actually um, very, uh, very uh, hard in other codes, in our previous code, because uh, the AMR capability. All right, so I will give you some uh, qu uh, quantitative numbers to uh, highlight the capability of AMR. So, um, so for this simulation, we, we, we start from like 10 to the five Lundgren's number up to 10 to the seven Lundgren's number. And uh, um, the AMR uh, degree frame increase increased uh, very little compared to the uniform mesh. So in the end, we are looking at uh, less than 0.1% of degree freedom compared to uniform mesh. So as a result, this make the, uh, some simulations possible for this kind of challenging problem where, uh, where we only need like less than day uh, using several hundred thousand CPUs. So instead of, instead of several weeks. And the six to the uh, large time step we took and the M-firm implementation, the AMR overhead is very, uh, very small. So it's quite negligible in the entire simulation. So this is a very efficient. So uh, let, let me summarize. So it's a, it's a 
very high level talk. So, so we developed an incompressible resistive MHD uh, solver based on MFM, and it demonstrated uh, very good scalability and adaptivity using uh, a very stiff uh, multi scale problem. And there's a paper to summarize <coughs> some of the stuff I present today. And also, the, our implementation is available in this TDS MHD developer branch. So if you are interested, you can take a look at that. So with that, I'll, I'll stop here.